When we moved to our new house in 2021, we wanted a flat driveway. However, as everyone already knows, selection was rather limited, so we decided to extend our back patio for basketball. So the original size of the patio was 15 feet by 15 feet, or the exact length of a free throw. We saw this post on Pinterest and decided this was the type of design we wanted, something that was a little more circular and flowy versus the typical rectangle. So we started making measurements and learned that we could fit about 27 feet by 27 feet in the backyard and have the patio extend all the way to the gate. Yeah. Once we settled on a design we called 811. Make sure you always call 811 before you dig, they come out and mark your lawn. The red lines are the power lines to the house. I confirmed that those were deep enough that they wouldn't be an issue because the extended patio will end up covering up those power lines. So the risk you take is for whatever reason they need to get to those power lines, they can destroy the new project. So it's just something to be aware of. The orange paint marks the internet. Internet lines typically are not very deep in ground and ours was running along the fence. And when you have contractors coming in with a bobcat versus digging by hand, there is always a chance that they cut the line. And unfortunately, they did cut the line and we were without internet for about 48 hours. The pictures here are the result after day one of excavating. If you remember, we were trying to come up with a design that was a little more circular and flowy than this. So my wife was just not happy with this design at all. We actually had to send the contractor back that Pinterest image we talked about earlier and edit images on our phone to include a line with what we really wanted. And this should have really been a massive red flag. The other issue we had was what to do with this buried downspout. We couldn't really run it horizontally due to the underground sprinkler pipes, so we had to run them all the way under the patio into the middle of the backyard. Therefore, I had to go to the hardware store again and pick up at least 30 feet of 4-inch PVC pipes and PVC cement. Here is the first video of the newly poured concrete. It has probably been drying for a couple of hours now. You can see it isn't 100% dry with those little wet spots, but you can still walk on it. The first thing I noticed was now I'll have to paint that PVC pipe white to blend in with the downspout. Also, the contractor should have taken the downspout back another couple of inches to avoid that cement curb. It would have been such an easy fix, however, the curb was just poured around the downspout, and now it's too late. So, moving to the edge of the patio, we will see the other end of the PVC pipe from the downspout. That will need a pop-up drain once dirt is filled in around it, and speaking of dirt, I had to go to the hardware store again to pick up some bags of dirt. This is mainly due to such a severe drop-off from the edge of the concrete, but we also wanted to cover the stones to avoid any runoff. Yeah. At this point we have internet again, hooray! AT&T came out and laid a new fiber optic cable line even closer to the fence, so we shouldn't have an issue if we need to dig around the edges of the patio for sprinklers, which is a relief. We are now into late fall and just focused on regrowing grass in the side yard that the bobcat destroyed in the summertime. And then around the holidays I got up on the ladder to install some solar powered LED motion sensor lights for night basketball. So the major problem comes spring at this point, highlighted by those UNO cards, is that the original patio and the new patio edition are no longer level. This shouldn't happen less than a year in, especially if the two pieces of concrete were pinned together with rebar like they're supposed to be. You can see there's a half inch difference on the corner, which is an ankle injury waiting to happen or a tripping risk, so something needed to be done to fix the playing surface. The quickest and easiest fix to this problem would be mud jacking. However, we decided to go with the foam jacking instead because it had a longer warranty it's lighter, the holes in the concrete are smaller, so we just felt more comfortable with that process. The issue with both mud jacking and foam jacking is that it seems like it's impossible to be 100% perfect because you can raise up the slab too fast or too much and you can actually crack the slab. That would be a big fail. So you are limited to what you can accomplish and can only go so far. 
as you can see by these ruler photos, that the plane surface is looking a lot better, but it isn't 100% flush, so we will still need to resolve that issue. So we use foundation recovery systems to level the patio, and they confirmed our fear that when they were cutting along the joints with their saws, that the original patio and the new patio extension were not pinned with rebar, and that's why they weren't moving in tandem. A couple of days later, Foundation Recovery Systems came out to finish the project. They used some caulk and some sand on the joints to give it a cleaner look, and it turned out about as well as you'd expect. It's not perfect, obviously, but we were very happy with the results. The frustrating part of this whole thing, though, is that we just weren't expecting to have this project in the first place, and I think all homeowners can understand that problem. So I quickly learned that mowing or trimming that corner was going to be a nightmare. So I just decided to plant a bush with some mulch around it to make my life easier. Pictures here illustrate that we had to grind down some of the edges on the new patio based off subpar finishing work. Here you are seeing what is called floating the edge to level the concrete that was off a quarter of an inch. So we now have three different colors of concrete on our patio. Our HOA doesn't actually allow portable basketball hoops, so these picks are for Facebook Marketplace because we need to sell this hoop since I'm about to order the Mega Slam 60 inch basketball goal system. The Mega Slam arrived on a pallet with curbside delivery, so thankfully my brother in law and father brought over a dolly to help me move it into the garage where it stayed until ready for installation. And good thing they brought the dolly because those boxes were quite heavy. The next project was moving one sprinkler head that was going to be in the way of the basketball hoop. So I dug it up and moved it to a temporary position about four feet away from the edge. There is also a temporary retaining wall there, and the goal is eventually to grade the lawn, but as of now we cannot get a hold of the landscapers, so this is going to have to work. We just didn't want concrete sticking up in the air. The Mega Slam installation manual calls for a four foot hole to be dug. I hired Sport Court to not only dig the hole and pour the concrete, but also install the basketball hoop system. The problem with the concrete base is you can see it is a little lower than the plane surface, so this is just another injury risk when running and jumping towards the hoop. The solution was Sport Court was going to pour some additional self-leveling compound on top of the current base, up to the edges of the forms so they will need to raise the anchor kit a little bit to provide space for the new concrete. This was an exciting day as the sport court tiles arrived. We went with a gray plane surface with a graphite border. The dilemma with a court that is lacking a straight edge line though is what to do with that border. We decided to swap out the graphite border tiles along the rounded edge of the patio for the gray tiles to avoid the border looking a little too jagged. We kept gray towards the hoop and then put more graphite towards the house around the gate. Sadly, the self-leveling compound already broke in the back corner. This piece is probably about a half inch thick and I had to go buy some cement glue to reattach it. Even with the additional self-leveling compound, the base was still a little too low. So therefore I bought some outdoor rubber tiles that you typically see in a gym that can be pieced together. Those were 3 8 of an inch thick and they helped with the transition from the plain surface to the base tiles around the hoop. Here you can see that with a box knife, you can easily cut the tiles to the shape that you want. By cutting the tiles along the edge, we avoided overhang into the yard, which resulted in just a much cleaner look. For aesthetics, I bought some sod to help with the dirt runoff and also the ball from constantly rolling into the yard. However, since it was the dead of summer, it was definitely the wrong time of year to plant sod. I also reached out to Sport Court for their interlock edging system that they used on the curves by the hoop. I wanted some for around the curb by the bush near the back gate, but I was pleasantly surprised that Sport Court dropped off an entire roll of edging and they said we could use it all. I think in total it was about 250 feet. So we decided to put edging pretty much everywhere except the bottom step, and we really like the look because it is just more consistent now across the entire court. 
I think I would have still preferred ramps on the edge of our sport court tiles that you might see from other companies, but because of the shape of our patio, it just wasn't applicable. So this was the best case scenario for us. I wanted to show a quick comparison at dusk, what it looks like without solar powered LED lights and with the LED lights on. It's kind of hard to see in the pictures, but it does make a difference. We are just so relieved that this project is now done. The project was much more stressful than anticipated, but everything seems to be worth it now. The next step is to get the yard graded, and then we can call the backyard complete, baby.